Aerolink is Intel's revolutionary new processor for mainstream desktop, featuring new P cores and E cores, disaggregated tile based 3D Foveros packaging, an integrated NPU for AI acceleration, a next generation Uncore, DLVR power rails, and so much more. In this video series, I have a closer look at the Aerolake performance tuning and overclocking opportunities. I have a look at the compute, the memory subsystem, and the data fabric. In this video, we have a closer look at the memory subsystem. The memory subsystem, also referred to as MemSS, consists of two DDR5 memory controllers and the system memory. The subsystem connects to the network on chip, NOC, which is part of the next generation Uncore NGU located on the SOC tile. DDR overclocking on Arrow Lake is not substantially different compared to Raptor Lake. However, there's a little bit more overclocking headroom, and of course, it supports CUDIM. Arrow Lake has two DDR5 memory controllers, which are located on the SOC tile, which it shares with a lot of other IP blocks. The memory controller topology is slightly different on Arrow Lake than on previous DDR5 platforms, as each memory controller connects to one side of the system memory DIMMs. The clocking of the two DDR5 memory controllers of Arrow Lake is not substantially different to how it was on Raptor Lake. There's still a reference clock that gets multiplied by a ratio to get the eventual operating frequency. And it is still intimately tied to the system memory. The 100 MHz reference clock is derived internally from the SOC PLL. However, it can also be clocked with an external clock generator, which provides the reference clock for the SOC tile. This clock affects nearly all the IP blocks of Arrow Lake, except for those in the compute tile and the PCIe DMI links. This PLL can also be linked to the CPU PLL when you run it in synchronous mode, or it can work independently if you run it in asynchronous mode. This 100 MHz reference clock is then multiplied by four, and divided by 2, 3, 4, 6, or 12 to achieve a reference clock of 33, 66, 100, 133, or 200 megahertz. Let's call this the memory controller reference clock. In the ASUS ROG BIOS, you can configure the SOC BCLK frequency in the AI tweaker menu by first setting AI overclock tuner to anything else than auto. You can also switch between asynchronous and synchronous mode by adjusting the BCLK mode option. The memory controller reference clock is then multiplied by a CMI ratio to achieve the final memory controller frequency or Q clock. The system memory operating frequency, defined as the memory data RAID, is then obtained by multiplying the Q clock by two times the gear type plus one. There are two gear types available for Arrow Lake. Gear type zero is better known as gear two, and gear type one is known as gear four. In the ASUS ROG BIOS, you can configure the gear type via the AI tweaker menu by adjusting the memory controller DRAM frequency ratio. Let's look at an example. In the first example, we use a memory controller reference clock of 33 megahertz, gear two, and a CMI ratio of 120. That gives us a memory controller frequency of 4 GHz and a DDR5-8000 data rate. In our second example, we change the CMI ratio to 60 and use gear 4. Now we still have DDR5-8000 system memory, but the memory controller is running at 2 GHz instead. In practice, configuring the memory subsystem frequencies is much more simplified, as we can simply select a system memory data rate, for example DDR5-8000, and select gear 2 or gear 4. The memory controller reference clock and the CMI ratio are automatically determined by the BIOS auto rules. There are two important voltages that are involved with the clocking of the DDR5 memory controllers. There's VCCIA for the digital portion, and there's VDD2 for the analog portion. The external VCCSA motherboard VR, or MBVR, powers a number of parts on the SOC tile, including the memory controller. Unlike for the compute IP, the parts of the SOC tile are not powered using DLVR. 
so the power delivery is identical to previous architectures. The voltage configuration of the VCC-SA voltage rail is rather complicated. Since multiple IP domains share the voltage rail, the VCC-SA voltage is set based on the highest requested voltage from the various connected IP blocks. And the MEM-SS can dynamically request an operating voltage from the VCC-SA voltage rail using the SFIT protocol. The ultimate VCC-SA voltage, however, is defined by the maximum voltage requested from all VCC-SA powered rails, including the NGU and the MEM-SS. Having the MEM-SS capable of overriding the VCC-SA voltage is useful primarily in situations where a dynamic memory frequency technology is enabled. In that case, the memory controller needs to train each VF point at boot and higher memory frequencies may require higher VCCA voltages. However, as an end user, we almost never interact with this part of the system configuration. Unfortunately, the MEMSS adaptive mode voltage configuration is not available in the ASUS RG BIOS. As I mentioned, the MEMSS adaptive SFIT mode voltage regulation is not available on the ASUS BIOS that I'm using on this system here. But that doesn't mean that we can't control the MEMSS voltage because there's a second approach to power gate mode, and that's ignoring all of the SFIT requests and calculations and programming the VCCSA voltage regulator directly over PM bus. That effectively means that we can control the exact output voltage of the VCCSA voltage rail. This approach is a very traditional way of overclocking, whereby you set a fixed output voltage and then use an appropriate VRM load line setting, if available, to reduce the operating voltage in higher load scenarios. The load line configuration isn't particularly useful for the SA voltage rail. In the ASUS ROG BIOS, you can configure the VCC-SA voltage rail in the AI tweaker menu by configuring the CPU system agent voltage in manual mode. The external VDD2 motherboard VR is a static 1.1 voltage rail that powers a number of parts on the SOC tile, including the VDD QTX and analog IO part of the DDR PHY. It is also referred to as the memory controller voltage in the ASUS BIOS. In the ASUS ROG BIOS, you can set the VDD2 voltage rail in the AI tweaker menu by configuring the memory controller voltage. The internal VDDQ-TX analog linear voltage rail powers the transmission signaling from the memory controller to the system memory. On ASUS motherboards, it is by default in bypass mode and synchronized with the VDD2 voltage. In the ASUS ROG BIOS, you can configure the VDDQ-TX voltage rail in the AI Tweaker Advanced Memory Voltages submenu by adjusting the VCC DDQ control bypass option. You can manually set the voltage in the same menu using the VDDQ voltage override option. The external VCCIO motherboard VR is a static 1.25 volt rail that powers many of the analog IO like USB 3 and display. Unlike prior generations, it has nothing to do with the memory controller or memory overclocking. In the ASUS ROG BIOS, you can set the VCCIO voltage rail in the AI tweaker Tweaker's Paradise submenu by configuring the VCCIO 1.25 volt voltage option. To safeguard the processor, Intel has imposed strict voltage limits on the MEMSS. That basically means that the MEMSS cannot request higher voltages to the CPU power control unit. By default, the voltage limit for the MEMSS is 1.122 volt but this can be increased to 1.219 volt under ambient conditions. When the temperature is below 10 degrees Celsius, you can further increase the voltage limit or disable the limit altogether. Unfortunately, you cannot set the MEMSS voltage limit independently in the ASUS ROG BIOS. The on-package DRAM Power Management Integrated Circuit, or PMIC, is responsible for the primary voltage rails for the DDR5 memory. On Arrow Lake, the DDR5 PMIC has two input voltages, 5V volt and 3.3V. The specification further defines four switching output regulators for 2x VDD, 
VDDQ and VPP, and two LDO outputs of 1.8 and 1 volt. The PMEC also has plenty of other features, such as I2C and I3C, over voltage and over temperature production, and so on. As every DDR5 DIMM has its own PMEC, you can run separate voltages on the sticks. In the ASUS ROG BIOS, you can access the PMEC settings in the AI Tweaker Advanced Memory Voltages submenu. You can change the settings of all PMICs in sync or change the settings of each PMIC individually. Overclocking the memory subsystem on Arrow Lake is not that much different from Raptor Lake. You still have an almost endless lists of knobs and options to tune anything related to the memory, including the timing, the voltages, the signaling, the training, and so on. Memory subsystem performance optimization is pretty much a black art that only few people in the world truly master. At the root of the tuning is trying settings one by one to see if they make an impact on performance. I won't dig into the details of memory tuning in this video as that's a computer science university course on its own. But I will give some tips for the casual overclockers on how they could think about optimizing the system memory and the memory subsystem. Intel Extreme Memory Profile 3.0 is the new XMP standard for DDR5 memory and is the successor to XMP 2.0 for DDR4 memory. It was introduced together with the Alder Lake processors in 2021, and it's largely based on the XMP 2.0 standard, but has some additional functionality. The XMP 3.0 standard is designed with six sections. One global section describes the generic data, which is used across all the profiles, and the five other sections are designed for five profiles respectively. Each profile has a wide range of configurable fields related to voltage, frequency, and memory timings. In the ASUS ROG BIOS, you can access the XMP profiles in the AI Tweaker menu via the AI Overclock Tuner menu item. ASUS Memory Presets is an ASUS overclocking technology that provides you with a selection of memory tuning presets for certain memory ICs. The presets will adjust the memory timings and voltages. On the ASUS ROG Z890 Apex motherboard with BIOS 0701, there are three presets available for Hynix 2x16 and 2x24GB ADI memory. DRAM clock period is an ASUS specific memory configuration option that lets you train the system memory as if it was running a different frequency. For example, you can train DDR5-8400 memory as if it were DDR5-6000 memory. The main advantage is that the memory controller will use more aggressive memory timings associated with lower speed memory. After training with the aggressive timings, the memory frequency is increased to the target frequency. The DRAM clock period option refers to the DRAM frequency menu items in the AI Tweaker main menu. The reference number matches the current memory frequency. Setting lower lets you train as lower memory frequencies. DIM Fit is a brand new ASUS overclocking technology that provides you with a means to fine tune the memory signaling quality for your specific processor, motherboard, and system memory. The main goal is to improve the signaling and therefore expand overclocking headroom or improve memory stability. The DIM fit process will do a grid search for the optimal hyperparameters for your memory. That involves several reboots and quick stability checks to analyze stability with various parameters. Therefore, it's required that your system is at least somewhat stable to go through this process. The best way to utilize this technology is to first find a stable memory configuration, then run dim fit, and then afterwards try higher frequencies. You can also use it to achieve superior stability, for example, increasing the memtest stability from half an hour to several hours. Dynamic Memory Boost is an Intel technology that enables at runtime switching between two memory profiles, the standard JDEC SPD profile and the selected Intel XMP 3.0 profile. The dynamic switching is based on the workload demands. In the ASUS ROG BIOS, you can enable Dynamic Memory Boost in the AI Tweaker DRAM Timing Control Configure Memory Dynamic Frequency Switching submenu. 
real-time memory frequency is another Intel technology that enables at runtime switching between two memory profiles, also between the default JDAC SPD profile and an Intel XMP 3.0 profile. I'm not quite sure what's the difference between dynamic memory boost and real-time memory frequency, but it seems they are mutually exclusive technologies. I find that optimizing the memory subsystem can have a pretty sizable impact on the ADA64 and benchmark performance. By enabling the DR5-8400 XMP profile, the bandwidth increases by more than 50% and the latency improves by 25%. Further memory subsystem performance optimization with tweaked subtimings, increased NGU and D2D operating frequency yields another 30 percentage points additional bandwidth and doubles the improvement in memory latency. Adjusting the memory controller frequency from gear 2 to gear 4 doesn't have that much of an impact on the memory bandwidth. However, it severely impacts the memory latency. At DDR5-4800 with gear 2, the memory bandwidth is about 70 gigabytes per second with 100 nanosecond latency. With gear 4, the memory bandwidth is still approximately 70 gigabytes per second, but the latency drastically increases to 127 nanoseconds. We see the same at DDR5-8400 when enabling XMP. The memory bandwidth is about the same between gear 2 and gear 4, however, the latency is much worse. I could use gear 2 mode up to DDR5-8600 without much tuning, meaning the memory controller ran at 4.3 GHz. 